स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नमः Dear friends welcome back to the study of the Bhagavad Gita and we have started on chapter 5 the chapter 5 teaches you what is the real meaning of sadhyas firstly intellectually you are absolutely crystal clear rock solid in your intellectual understanding what is sadhyasa it's up here first then it comes down to the level of behavior pattern how do you concretize practicalize those ideas that are emanating from the scriptures which are nothing else but the experience of a realized soul put down in paper and pen for us the subsequent generations so the authority of this teaching ends with god who discloses this mystery and secret to a chosen few and those realized souls explain their experiences right from a to z as a novice to a realized soul and it is to be found well spread in the scriptures so we have an authority to fall back upon so that nobody can say that it is your brain wave you are a very imaginative person and you are explaining your imaginations in a very attractive manner please don't think that i am honest to the scriptures and i am trying within the limits of our language how much i can explain it to you in the third shloka i'll not go back to the first two let us go ahead a little in the third shloka sri krishna reads our mind he has been using the word karma sanyasa and karma yoga word karma is common to both and the two different words is yoga and sanyas sanyas means samyak dhyasa samyak means in totality without any residue left which has no way to come back again and assail you that is what total rejection is sanyasa rejection of what when you say a total rejection i will ask you i see in the world so many types of rejections and they are not everlasting it happens it comes back again it happens so i am a bit confused sir could you by your own words tell me what is sadhyasa and what do i reject in totality which never comes back again what is that in the third shloka he explains gya sa nitya sadhyasi he is always 
fit to be called a sannyasi for all times to come. Who is he? Jo na dveshti na kaushati. He who does not have any dislikes or likes. He doesn't crave for anything to gain, nor does he crave for anything not to happen to him. Averse. Attachment and aversion is the nearest English word of dvesha is aversion and raga is attachment. Know for him to be no for certain he is a nitya sannyasi who from his attitudinal correction who has totally rejected the very concept of attachment and aversion i like this so I want to have it. I hate this. I want not to have it. Not to happen to me. This is dvesha, aversion, and raga, attachment. Now, let us stop here. Let us use our robust common sense sharp common sense. Let me analyze our lives. Let us be honest to ourselves. Let us analyze the life that we are leading. I want this and my whole personality is geared up. There's a harmony or synthesis in my desiring sufficient intellectual support. Yes, I need it. It is necessary. Without which I can't live. I have justified myself. I have prepared a rock solid, crystal clear conviction. I need this. And the whole body mechanism being motivated by this conviction, I act. Physically, emotionally, rationally, egoistically. And I stall not, I stop not till I achieve it, or with my best of efforts, either I achieve or I fail to achieve. Why? The world moves in its own way, according to God's will, not my will. And I am asking for something which is not approved by God. It will never happen. So, either I succeed or I fail. What is the reaction in me? If I succeed, I hit cloud nine. I am in ecstatic joy, and if I fail, I am depressed, I sink down with a thud on mud, a splatter mud all around. I am depressed. This is the game that we are playing, and we say we are happy. Please be a little objective. Please be a little commonsensical, though it is very uncommon. But let us be commonsensical and develop a robust common sense. This is our, how our life is flowing. Sannyasa means I don't my, make myself like a stupid ass a victim of circumstances and asking for the moon. Why don't I ask, O oh Lord, O oh God of the universe, if you so please, 
this is the desire that is dawning in my mind. It may not be correct. It may be correct. If you so will it, if you so think that it is good for me, O oh Lord, please grant me this. You are safe. You have left it to somebody who is in command of the show. You are no more a victim of elation and depression. You are stable. Sthiramati, Sthirabuddhi, Sthitapragya, Sthitatma. All are these Sanskrit words. And it's a very, very precise language. Sthitapragya means who is very maturely stable about the wisdom of unreality and uncertainty that he has acquired living with wide open eyes and ears in this world. Sthitapragya. Sthiramati is very stable in asking for something and the method by means of which he asks from God. All these words are joined with prefixed by the word sthira. Sthira means stable. We don't jump around like a monkey bitten by honeybees. A monkey itself is a restless animal and if it is bitten by honeybees, you can think of it, how he jumps around. We are like that. The scriptures say, Sthira is not to be so. So know him to be called a sannyasi all the time who has got rid of that attitude of expectation from this world and his stupid conviction, he can get it without the sanction of the divine. He is Nitya Sadyasi. And if you can develop this attitude by constantly disciplining yourself. And the process of discipline has been mentioned as sadhana chatushtaya. Four pillars of sadhana. Sadhana means self-imposed discipline to reach a particular goal. Viveka, Vairagya, Samadamadi, Satsampatti, Mamukshatya. Viveka is a highly discriminative attitude between what is real, what is, appears to be real, but not real. This word, Viveka. Vairagya is I want nothing else but to know myself. I want nothing else but an unshakable, comfortable relationship with the Divine. I want that and nothing else. Without Six qualities of self-discipline. Shama, Dhamma, Uparati, Titiksha, Sama, Dhamma, Uparati, Titiksha, Sadhya, Samadha. Management of external organs. My hand should not do what is not proper. My five external organs must be under my control. My six internal organs, five internal organs, must be under my control. Uparata means 
I am habituated in hankering for the things of the world. I cut at the root of that habit. I'll seek nothing from the world but seek oneness with my dear Lord. Keep that passage open. Don't throw the baby with the bathtub. Keep that passage open. Yes, I desire, only desire is to be one with my maker in heaven. Uparati, Titiksha. While living in this world, while you are cultivating this attitude, you will be found out by your colleagues and they will criticize you, they will laugh at you, they will bully you, they'll make your life miserable. Don't lose your poise. Sohanam Sarvadukkhanam Whatever the unpleasant things may create sadness to you, live with fortitude, bite your jaw, and hold fast. I am not going to be disturbed. Apratikara Purugavakam. That is, don't think this is a step I should take to mend it. Never do that. Apratikara Purvakam. Chinta Bilapa Rahitam. You don't need to weep upon it, grief upon it. Let it happen. What do I care? My goal is that. Apratikara Purvakam. This is what they take size. And Sraddhya. Guru Vedanta Bhaktiyeshu Ativa Vishash. What does it mean? You have an unshakable, rock solid faith on what my Guru has told me, what my scriptures have taught me, and if I am fortunate enough, what have the realized souls with whom I had a contact. What did they teach me? But be very, very, very proper, correct to find out whether it's a fake or a real, real answer. He can't hide himself and you can't make a mistake. Nobody makes a mistake to see a rising sun and say it is the sun. They are of that character. So dear, that is Shraddha, discipline, Sabadhan. Ultimately, <laughs> everything will fall in its proper place. The whole pattern will be known to you. <clears throat> These are the disciplines. It will come to you if you wholeheartedly follow and you become a Nitya Sadhyasi. This is the intellectual part of it. We humans, we call ourselves rational and intellectual. Good enough, that's why we are, so there's no harm calling us rational and intellectual. But what about the harmony, the cohesion between thinking and behaving. You think noble, but your behavior is worldly. So you are splitting your personality. You are willfully making yourself a victim of schizophrenia. Let your thinking and your behavior to lace together. That is Samadhan. So now, Sri Krishna, having explained to us what is Nitya Sanyasi, 
not only one who wears such a colored cloth. This has a significance. Let us casually go through it. A collared dog on the streets, you see a collared dog is roaming about. As soon as you see the collar, you know it is not a paria. It is not one of those roadside doggies. It has a master. This says to the society, he has vowed himself with certain vows. He has dedicated his life to the service of God as service of mankind is service of God. He has educated himself, vowed himself to see the presence of the divine everywhere. This is what this color represents. The person who wears it, he should be responsible. If he is not, the society is there to make him responsible. You have worn this cloth and you are behaving like a criminal. What do you mean? Don't try to deceive. We will defrock yourself, we will derobe you. And defrocking and derobing is a Roman Catholic punishment. You are not worthy of wearing this robe. These are the significances. Coming back to the subject now, we move on to the next shloka. He says, Sankha Yoga Prithag Bala, Pandi, Bala Prada Prabhadanti Na Pandita. Now he is getting into a very subtle philosophical discussion. And this philosophical discussion has been put very elaborately like a sun shining in the blue sky. Sri Ramakrishna has proved it in his own life. I'll come to that later on. Let us get the meaning of it. Sankha and Yoga, that is Sannyasa Yoga and Karma Yoga, they are the same. You are giving it two different names. You are identifying two different types of discipline and you say they are the same. Why this anomaly? Why this contradiction? The contradiction is not here. Contradiction is in my understanding. He says they are the same. Why? They reach the same goal. A karma yogi through this discipline goes to a particular goal. A sannyasa yogi through his proclaimed discipline goes to the same goal. Goal-wise, they are the same. And Swamiji gave a very, very simple, Swami Vivekananda Ji gave a very simple geometrical example. I just touched on it last Sunday. He says, conceive of a circle. Circle has three components center, radii, and the circumferences. That circumference can be divided into infinite equal parts. And finitely, 360 degrees make a circle, 360 into 60 minutes make a circle, minutes multiply by seconds into 60 makes it a circle, it's more than a billion. You can subdivide it, but mind you, 
you have to draw a perpendicular and you will reach the center. Drawing a perpendicular is a bust. Ekam api asthita samyak. Underline the word samyak. In its correctness, in its total correctness, in totality correctness. What does it mean? Each and every faith and belief has enunciated a code of discipline for their belief and faith. Christians have their faiths and beliefs. And the discipline has been enunciated. Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, Zoroastrianism, Taoism, even Shintoism, worshippers of forefathers, they have a certain laid out discipline. And they say, you must follow the discipline with total dedication, with wholehearted attempt. Samyak in totality. Ubhayor vidyate phalam. You will reach the same goal as millions of radii if they are radius. They originate in a perpendicular manner from the circumstance to the set. It will reach the set. Therefore, all radii lead to the center. All religions lead to the same goal. Now, each religion has coined a term what that goal is. The Christians say to go back to your maker in heaven to enjoy eternal life in paradise. Eternal life in paradise and enjoy. There is no sadness, no misery there. The Muslims say this life should be totally dedicated to the maker, Khuda, Khuda ka banda banda. Make yourself a totally devoted servant of the master. What does it mean? Have no personal ego. Your ego has been surrendered to God. Thy will be done. In Hindu, there are so many definitions. So, it was left to Acharya Shankara, who wrote a commentary on Sri Krishna's Bhagavad Gita. He coined a phrase which is universally applicable. What is that goal? Atyanti dukkha nivritti parama sukha prapti. Atyantik, without any residue in totality. Dukkasya nivritti, total abnegation of the concept of misery, sadness and happiness from your brains. Totally removed. And that is, you don't live like an inanimate object. You are not supposed to dull your faculties. The faculties will be such that abnegation of misery and saturated with ecstatic divine joy. 
आत्यंतिक दुख से निवृत्ति परम सुख प्राप्ति इन एक्सप्लिकेबल बट एक्सपीरियंसेबल इन डिस्क्राइबेबल बट एक्सपीरियंसेबल डिवाइन एक्सटेटिक जॉय दैट इज द गोल ऑफ ऑल ह्यूमन विच एव द पाथ यू मे फॉलो द उपनिषद से by so many examples one of the very common example is there are thousands of rivers in this mother earth of ours they meander through they flow through various types of land masses endless diversity but ultimate goal is to reach the ocean and lose their identity as a river what is the identity of a river it is contained by the left bank it is contained by the right bank it is contained by the bed of the river and the mass of water is called a river when that mass of water is qualified with two banks and the bed we call it a river when it is surrounded by earth all around we call it a pond water hole a lake we have names but ultimately all names of the rivers disappear when it reaches the ocean why no right bank no left bank no bottom there's no river the water is the essence of the river that essence has met with the absolute so oneness of all religions come through this idea or the paths are different the goal is one now please kindly give me a little break in diversifying the ideas don't think i warn you or i implore you don't think because i am a member of this organization that i am put in sri ramakrishna in a place in front of you who has the authority in his command by practicing in his own life all famous practicing religions in a short span of 12 years he started his spiritual journey as a ordinary priest in a temple the lowest strata of spiritual ritualistic approach the lowest strata a worshipper a priest what does he do he takes his life out of him puts it on that stone image on this picture sir what is in me is nothing but what it is in you you are only a symbol in essence you are in me and i am in you that is how spiritual life starts in a hindu way and he started his life as that and in 12 years time years as god willed it because he is an incarnation by his own commitment by his own behavior by his own authority the authority came to his by his own experience how by following samyak rupa in a correct manner all the disciplines of all the practicing principal religions Firstly, he took by storm 
all the varieties and denominations of Hinduism, endless. To be in a lighter mood, Hinduism believes as many religions, as many humans. That's what it is. Each one has a freedom with his faculty of ingenuity, rationality, emotionality, ingenuity and willpower. He can create his own path based on the disciplines pronounced to manage your personality. Sri Ramakrishna did just the same, followed the disciplines instructed by each and every principal religion. And as I told you, he took by storm as it were, each and every citadel of religion. All the denominations of Hinduism, all the disciplined practice of Christianity, and you will be surprised about 150 years ago he wanted to practice Islam in the Shirisha temple. So the owner of the Dakshinata temple, his supporter, his patron, Mathur Babu said, Sir, it is too much to swallow. Please don't do that. I'll be in dire trouble with the society. Please. Sri Ramachandra just said, is it so? Hire a small cottage in the village outside the temple garden. I'll stay there. And I'll be a devoted, faithful Muslimad. Muslimad means man devoted to his faith. He lived like a Muslim in that room, the village room, cottage, outside the periphery of the temple. And he had the vision of Muhammad and the Muhammad blessed him and merged with him. He saw a flash of light emanating from Muhammad entering him. Similarly, Christianity. While he was practicing Christianity, because it was a British Raj then, people accepted it, he practiced it while he was in Dakshinish. One day, he was invited by a neighbor, a very rich man, who had the habit of collecting beautiful artistic creation of all artists of the world, Sri Jodunath Malik. His palace, even today, stands next to the Dakshineshwar boundary. He was invited there while he was practicing Christianity. Climbing up the stairs, his eyes fell on a beautiful picture painted by the Italian artist, Mother the Mary, holding the bright, brilliant child in her arm, and the cherubic child with a smiling face looking at you. As soon as Sri Ramakrishna saw the picture, he found similarly a flash of effulgent light coming out of them, entering into it. And he felt oneness with the previous avatars and samyak vyavahara. Perfect discipline practiced by that faith. To cut a long story short, he had a vision of Rama, 
vision of Krishna, vision of Shiva, and the series of avatars. You will be surprised when two of his disciples came to him. Both of them were students of St. Xavier's, a very famous college in Calcutta. He looked at them and whispered to somebody else, Are, what a joke, what a fun. I've seen these two boys in Christ's group. Later on, Swamiji interpreted Peter and Paul. They were born as cousin brothers in Sri Ramakrishna's time, Swami Ramakrishnananda and Swami Shardananda. How could a person say, I have seen them in Christ's group, if he was not present there? How was he present there in the form of Christ himself? He broke the secrecy. When God says, Dharma Sansapanaya Sambhavami Juge Juge, I will be born over and over and again till the whole world is one with God. And I'll re establish, revalidate the lost veracity and lost value of Dharma. And it was left to Sri Ramakrishna in the modern age, age of science. What you see, what you experience by your sense organs, that is what you believe, and you believe in nothing else. But this is a vision which is deeper than what you see with your indriyas, your sense organs. And don't say it's a fable. Look at yourself. You say, I am. All of us, the whole human society under the sun, says, I am. And I politely ask you all, could you define to me, dear, who are you? No, 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 don't challenge my statement. I am convinced I am. I can't demonstrate my existence in a laboratory so that you can see me with my eyes. My eyes, my ears, my nose and everything work because of this body-mind mechanism, the most evolved biological creature. And this process of evolution has a meaning, has a purpose, that the most evolved biological creature, the human, with all the faculties at its command, should try to unfathom this mystery and answer this pertinent question, who are you? Tell me who are you? Can you? You say, I am. You don't know who I am. A realized soul knows who are you. And Sri Ramakrishna was born a little ahead of the so-called modern age as an answer to the question that whatever is proved in the laboratory is true, Otherwise, it is a fib, it's a myth. He transformed his whole body into an experimental laboratory. Come to me. I will show you that God is not an imagination. He resides everywhere. In you, in me. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, Sat, Chit, Ananda. They speak the same ideas. 
in different languages. This is what Sri Ramakrishna was born to prove. And the last concluding part of it is, Narendra Nath, later on who became the world weaver, <coughs> I'm sorry, Narendra Nath, who later became the world mover, Swami Vivekananda. He was a representative of oncoming modern society. He was continuously analyzing Sri Ramakrishna. They lived closely for more than four and a half years. Four and a half years. Very closely. Even sometimes Narendranath wanted to run away. And I'll tell you a funny incident. In Balaram Bose's house, a devotee's house, where Sri Ramakrishna used to go to hold such satsangs, such talks. His room was just next to the flight of stairs. Narin was also invited to attend, but Narin was not in a mood to move to Ramakrishna, whose room is next. He wanted to stealthily pass Ramakrishna's room and go to his friend to have a puff of hookah, a puff of tobacco. But he could not fool Sri Ramakrishna. As soon as he came up to the floor, stealthily he was running away. And Sri Ramakrishna, in an ecstatic mood, unable to stand, lost control of his body, crawled on the floor on his hips. Hey, Naren, why are you running away from me? Can you ever? Can you ever run away from me? What does it mean? In this age, we needed three different forms to convince the validity, veracity, authority, truthfulness of scriptures all over the world. Each faith has a scripture. He was born to prove the validity. That Narendranath, when Sri Ramakrishna was in his deathbed and passing away, Naren alone was sitting next to him. And you know he passed away from malignancy of the throat. Naren was thinking, I have tried to analyze this personality. I do not know in which category do I put him. He looks like a human, but his behavior pattern is not human. It's divine. And as God, how can God be in a frame, human frame? God is God. Almighty. That was a doubt in his mind. All of a sudden, he hears a stentorian clear voice. I will speak in Bengali and translate it immediately. In a stentorian scolding manner, he has lost his voice, but he spoke. Akhuno Tor Avishash, having lived with me for four and a half years, even then you have no faith in me. Who am I? Listen carefully. 
he who was born as Rama, he who was born as Krishna, that same he has born here as Ramakrishna as of today. And then he had a dig at Narendra. What was the dig? Each and every philosophy has emanated from human brains, which is incomplete. You will find the appearance on the world scene of people who have been categorized in a different category and incarnation, Son of God, God incarnate, they have created a category. They are the avatars, the descent of God in a human form. The Vaishnava Shastras and the Dvaitavadis and Vishishta Dvaitavadis, various philosophers, they have justified in their own system the advent of God. But Vedanta says, you are God. For me and you to speak of that language is a sacrilege, height of impertinence. But in reality, I have to find out the answer to this pertinent question, who am I? Ko hamasmi, who am I? And going through the disciplines shown, displayed, performed by Sri Ramakrishna, if we move on that track, we'll find the answer to this question. Ko hamasmi, I am Atma Brahma. I am the essence of the universe. Contained is this container. You are the same essence contained in your container. We are containers are diverse, universally diverse, but the essence is the same. This is what was left to Sri Ramakrishna. He reached the goal of all religions. How? By performing correctly, totally, wholeheartedly the prescribed discipline of each and every religion. Ekam api asthita samyak. That's why I told you, underline the word samyak. Perform those disciplines wholeheartedly with all the four faculties that you have, the most evolved of biological species. Rationality, emotionality, ingenuity, and willpower. Go ahead. You will reach the goal in your own way. Whether you want to follow up discipline or you want to chalk out yours. You are not strong enough to chalk out yours. Better to walk on the footsteps on the side. Thank you, my dear friends. Thank you. May God bless you. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna